Hi, this is Miss Wright, and I am going to go over the double standard in the Odyssey. Sweet Nymph and the Open Sea From the Odyssey, translated by Robert Fitzgerald, Book 5, lines 90 through 160, on page 84 through 85. What is a double standard? A principle rule or expectation that is applied unfairly to different groups, one group usually being condemned for the slightest offense while the other is treated far more leniently. Calypso makes an argument. When it comes to having mortal lovers, goddesses do not have the same freedom as gods. Does she prove her argument? What type of rhetoric does she use? Logos, pathos, or ether? This is Hermes. He has come to see Calypso to tell her it is time for her to release Odysseus so that he can go home. It is not his destiny to stay there with her for all eternity. It is his destiny to see his family again. O oh, you vile gods, in jealousy supernal, you hate it when we choose to lie with men, immortal flesh by some dear mortal side, so radiant dawn once took to bed Orion, until you easeful gods grew peevish at it, and holy Artemis, Artemis throned in gold, hunted him down in Delos, where her with her arrows then demeter of the tasseled tresses yielded to iasion mingling and making love okay before i go on to the um next slide let's just take a look here she says you hate it when we choose to lie with men it's a double standard because the gods are well known for having fathered children with many mortal women and they don't seem to have a problem with that, but they do seem, according to Calypso, to have a problem when goddesses sleep or have relationships with mortal men. And I put antithesis here because we have mortal and then we have immortal and mortal, two opposite ideas in the same sentence. So I put antithesis down below. This phrase ends with Artemis. This phrase begins with Artemis. That's an example of Anadiplotus. And at the bottom here, I have then the tassel tresses. That's alliteration. Very nice, tight alliteration, especially in this section. This is an illustration of Artemis killing a mortal in a furrow three times plowed but Zeus found out and killed him with a white hot thunderbolt so now you grudge me too my mortal friend but it was I who saved him saw him straddle his own keelboard the one man left afloat when Zeus rent wide his ship which chain lightning and overturn him in the wine dark sea then all his troops were lost his good companions but wind and currents washed him here to me so she is basically saying she goes back to the double standard again because she shows that um zeus killed the lover of demeter with his thunderbolt um, even though he himself had had many female mortal lovers. And she says, so now you grudge me. You have this problem with me, this conflict with me, because I have a mortal lover. And she's basically saying, this is not fair. It's not fair that I should not be allowed to keep him. And she makes this her argument by saying, you know, I saw him. I saw him out there on the waves. Um, he may, maybe would have drowned. But I saved him after Zeus destroyed his ship. I am the one who 
who took him in and has taken care of him. I fed him, loved him, sang that he should not die, nor grow old ever in all the days to come. But now there is no eluding Zeus's will. If this thing be ordained by him, I say, so be it. Let the man strike out alone on the vast water. Surely I cannot send him. I have no long oared ship, no company, to pull him on the broad back of the sea. My counsel he shall have, and nothing hidden, to help him homeward without harm. Okay, in this last slide, because I'm trying to keep it short, you can see I've identified uh, epistrophe, because this phrase ends with him, and this phrase ends with him. So this repetition at the end of a line or end of a phrase, that's epistrophe. Um, here she's talking about the fact that she had offered Odysseus immortality. If he stayed with her, he could live forever. He's going to make a different choice. Here I have epanalypsis, where no is repeated and then here and emphasize no long ship, no, no long oared ship, no company that um, to emphasize the fact that he was isolated. Personification, broad back of the sea, broad back of the sea, personification. And then we have this really nice tight alliteration with hidden help him homeward and harm. Okay, so basically that's all I have for you for this. Um, Calypso is making an argument. Would you be persuaded by her argument? And what kind of argument is she making? Is she making pathos, ethos, or logos? So be ready to discuss that when we come back to class. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Give me a like if it's not too terrible for you. And shout out to all of my awesome students. Um, keep up the good work that you've been doing all year. And have a great day.